there was something that offended her. I think she was a sensitive woman with a vulnerable heart. Obviously, she was still in love with him. Let me read you this part. My dear M, what can I say to you now? I still love you very much, but the love is mixed with blame and anger. The tragedy was... Her love life was just as rough as the battle she was facing. My dear Fong, there you always see the sadness of separation from family. But here I see a scene thousands of times sadder than that. Regardless, I still hope that you and I never lose our happiness and the hope in our hearts. We will go listen to music, come home late at night, and write in our diaries. Our dreams continue even as bullets and bombs surround us. When hearing Cap speak of the day Kim was killed, I felt even sorrier for him. Kim is dead already. His head is broken, a leg is gone, and he lies in the sand of his homeland. Kim's father's hands were bound tightly. His wounded shoulder bled. When he saw Kim's body, tears flowed, and his great love for his son could be seen in his eyes. Kim is dead already. His mother stood in front of his corpse, but was in shock. She hasn't yet returned to normal. When she recovers, she will cry for her son. Dear Kim, in another world, can you feel the sadness of those still living? đó cháu đang làm ruộng thì bị một mảnh bom xuyên qua bắp chân khi người nhà khiến cháu đến bệnh xá 
thì vết thương của cháu gần như đã bị hoại thư cháu khóc lóc van xin chị thùy đừng cưa chân của cháu để cháu còn lấy vợ và chị thùy để giữ lửa đó bác ạ à. sau khi khỏi chân cháu xin ở lại bệnh xá theo học lớp y tá do chị thùy dạy và anh thuận làm lớp trưởng chị thùy và anh thuận quý nhau như chị em ruột khi nghe tin chị thùy hy sinh chính anh thuận đã dẫn hai du kích lên đây tìm xác chị để mai táng thế rồi sau đó một năm anh thuận cũng hy sinh bác có mệt lắm không bác đi được sắp đến rồi bác ạ à? có lần chị thùy về dưới đồng bằng vừa bán bó xong cho một anh thương binh thì địch ập đến chị thùy vội chạy ra sân ngăn chúng lại và hô to nô vi si nô vi si Đấy là lần đầu tiên chị Thùy giáp mặt với lính Mỹ Còn lần cuối cùng là... À, đây rồi bác ạ à.
đưa nó cho chị xem nào em cũng đi vào chị em thấy em thì easy với nhìn thì màu rất sợ ơi em đi có chị Nhà mình có hai người vào ngành y gì đấy Cả con nữa là ba Em đi Hoa tặng đấy Hoa chàng nào thế <cười> Thôi vào cắm hoa giúp chị <cười> Vâng Mẹ ạ à. Hôm nay sinh nhật Thùy Cả nhà mình cùng ăn tươi Vâng ạ Bố ạ à. Hoa đẹp quá chị nhỉ ừ. Chị Thùy Sinh nhật chị có muốn trả đấy Nhờ với chị nhá Vâng Cả tay đi xem nào Nào đấy nhá Nào 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Lại đây chị something to show you. <laughs> wow, mom. It's a fall forest. The leaves are fading. Just like me. <laughs> the autumn of my life. Mom. <laughs> It's beautiful, man. Mm. Just like you. Reading that diary made me so thankful for this family gathering. We are so blessed. I didn't realize the war over there was so cruel. Cool. That doctor, she had such a noble spirit. Fred, I'm afraid that diary can burn you. When he handed the diary to me, Vietnamese sergeant who saved us said, Don't burn this one, Fred. It has fire inside it already. I think you should publish him. It's not just one person's story. There's things in there everybody can learn from. What's so serious? What are you guys talking about? The diaries that Fred brought back from Vietnam. Whose diaries are they? They were of a female Viet Cong doctor. A Viet Cong? And you intend to publish it? Are you crazy? You both know what you're doing is against army law. I'm no longer in the army. But you can't defend this country's honor. You know they were our enemy. Shut up, Fred. People like Rob and I were sent over there to fight against civilians. Is that what you call honor? This family has been in the army for generations. You will not offend this family. Fred, Andrew, no fighting in my house. Sorry, Mom. Fred? Andrew, I have something to say to you. I understand that you have very different opinions on this, but I want you to show each other some respect. That war's been over for two years. You want it to continue in this house? Sons, please don't spoil my birthday. Andrew, I think you should have a look at it. It's different than what you think. 
Do you really think so? Fred, I have something to say to you. You need to get those diaries back to the doctor's family. It would just be invaluable to them. And as a mother, I can imagine how much it would mean to her mother to know her late daughter's thoughts and life. Once a bullet is fired, there's no way to get it back. Yes, I'll remember. Better not to fire it, right, Uncle? <laughs>
It's 35 years I've had these diaries now. After reading them, my mom said, be careful, this can burn you. She was right. 35 years later and I'm still relentlessly consumed by them. She's insisted I find a way to return the diaries to Tui's family. But how do I even find them? Part one. Was it a tear? A drop of sweat? Or simply a droplet of water? find the answer there hopefully or at least we'll find some people that will help us locate the doctor's family you know Fred I think it's time we let people know about the diaries the people that attend that seminar may have connections with Vietnam or at least have an interest in Vietnam affairs uh, Rob so much time has passed the diaries are getting old and so are we my main concern is that they'll be damaged. Oh, I also read that Texas Tech's library has an excellent archival department with modern facilities. We should consider handing the diaries over to them for preservation. Okay, Rob, I agree with you. Let's bring the diaries to Texas Tech. diary shows us how much alike we all are. We all have dreams, families, fears. No way to recall a bullet once it has been fired. by the image of that woman for so many years. Good morning. Good morning. Where is her family now? Did any of them survive the war? No, I'm sorry. He's not in right now. Good morning, Anne. Hold on one moment, please. Sir, there's a call from Vietnam for you. Oh, great. Thank you. Hello, Ted. Hi, Fred. Hi, sir. It's clear from the diaries that her family lived in Hanoi. My guess is that her father might have gotten transferred to a bigger hospital with a surgery department somewhere in Hanoi. Oh. 